I have created many accounts on RuneScape over the course of the many years that I have played this game, yet there has always been one question about this account creation process that I have always been curious about. That question being, how far can I get a new account in 24 hours from scratch? I've always been curious to find out, so with that question in mind, let's begin our journey. So I do want to level my account across the board with various stats, but the main thing that I am interested in is getting my combat level to be as high as it can. This of course being within the 24 hours, and I am going to be doing this in pay to play worlds. There are actually these new things called adventure paths for new players, and they are actually kind of fun, but I'm not going to be worrying about that since my path is going to be a lot faster and a lot more rewarding than adventure paths. So first things first, we need a bit of starting cash, so I'm going to be heading towards the stronghold of security within Barbarian Village. But before we actually go into the stronghold of security, I'm going to be giving myself free cooked meat, which is a free plus three heal food. I'm just going to get a few by hopping through the worlds and picking them up. One thing that I managed to do on the way here was enable the authenticator on my account since it protects my account, plus I actually needed to gain access to the rewards within the stronghold of security. So that's 2k from floor one, that's 3k from floor two, and that's 5k from floor three. So we're going to get out of here and go to the grand exchange for my first money making method. I'm going to be getting all of these supplies for the druidic ritual quest, and I'm going to be getting a few Falador teleports as well as a few Varrock teleports. Talk to the little cake mix. There we go. Druidic ritual complete. And then you get three herbal orb. But that's not what we actually care about. The thing that we care about is going to buy ourselves the pestle and mortars from the shop. So if I remember correctly, these actually buy for like a really cheap amount. Yeah, four coins. I'm not sure if there's anything else worth buying in the store, but I'm going to just by the pestle and mortars because I know that they are guaranteed money. So what I'm going to be doing is hopping throughout every single world and buying these pestle and mortars. So just for the record, bought the entire inventory for four GP each. So what? It costs us less than like 200 GP and we already turned that into 14K in one inventory. Let's go bank. Bank all these for now. Bank this. There we go. So now we are going to go sell all of our pestle and mortars. I think we have a bit over 100 now. So here we go. 103 from 600 GP to well 19k I I'm gonna insta sell it honestly you could just sit uh, have it sit in there and wait but I'm impatient so so we turned 500 GP into a little under 50k so next there's a bunch of different things that we could do like there's a uh, little things that we, we can make like with a pestle and mortar probably should have kept one to be honest uh like you could turn a unicorn horns into unicorn dust you would check the the margins on it you try to buy the unicorn dust and then sell it and see what it's buying and selling for or what i'm just gonna do right now is do fruit baskets so we can check banana baskets or actually maybe apple baskets would be better so i'm pretty sure it's five apples to a basket so then we fill the basket so that cost us 537 gp and we made one what oh my gosh we made a lot of money from that point being we literally doubled it in a very short amount of time so let's go ahead and buy 105 of those and buy a lot of baskets and we will literally just fill the freaking inventories there we go there we go and now we Grab all those. So again, we just turned 11K into 34K. 11K gets instantly turned into 34K. And of course, it might not work with these specific items. And there are a bunch of different fruit items. But people are paying for convenience. So yeah, we already have 60K. We're literally going to turn this into a good amount of cash in no time. You're not packing those apples fast enough, Kev. I'm not packing a... F what? You're not going to make the money you need if you keep going that slow. Sell it again. 63K. Again, so what? Do we already have... Yeah, we already have 120K. So I'm going to keep doing this for a little bit because it's clearly freaking working very well but you again you don't have to do this with apples you could also do this with onions you pretty much just search uh fruits vegetables you can do oranges pretty much what you would do is just check how i did all right 166k we are already at over 200k so now we sell this 239k so we turned all of that into 328k so now i'm gonna take out what like 
40k. By the way, it's not even been an hour yet. It's only been about 52 minutes. We have more than enough money at this point, so we're gonna do a bunch of different quests and get a lot of levels. So we can also get uh, some house teleports, because uh, at this point, we want to get teleports everywhere. We can buy some food. You know what? I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, take another 40k. We can buy some lobsters. That's what we're gonna need for our food. Okay, so this is probably all the teleports that we need, to be honest. I'm gonna go and buy a house in uh, East Farrock. The reason why we're buying a house is because I want to be able to teleport everywhere very fast. I love how simple this quest is. You literally just need the beads. And then you get the XP. Like, it, it's literally that fast. So we go from one magic to eight magic. Burn our meat right here. And now we should have ourselves 10 magic. I'm gonna go train on cows. Hey, 13 magic. I'm gonna go get the Restless Ghost done. I don't even know what you need for that quest. I don't think you need anything, though. Oh. There we go. Nine combat, nine prayer. So now, that's the perfect amount of prayer. So I can go looting and kill any other looters. All right, now we're gonna go to PvP worlds and do a little bit of looting. And if any looters try to hop on my pile, we kill them. I looted for like half an hour. You get the idea of looting. And to be honest, I didn't even need to loot. I just wanted to show you, this is another money maker you can do. So I'm gonna save the strength amulet. Uh, I'm gonna sell literally everything else though. I'm also gonna save these rings of recoil because I'm gonna use them for bosses and stuff. All right, let's sell all the loot we got. Look at that. This is freaking, the dragon knives are 3.5K each. 25K for seven dragon knives. That's ridiculously good. All right. So 151k from looting. Honestly, these won't go for that much. So for this, let's say that we need to look up a quest guide. We can just do this by going to the wiki button right here, searching something uh, like, uh, let's say, Demon Slayer, which is one of the quests, and then it will pull up the wiki page for the actual quest guide. It does that for pretty much any guide. It's great. All right, so up next, 10 HP is not going to cut it. So we are going to go and do the Witch's House, and that is why we have the Rings of Recoil. So it's actually good that we got those. The boy's literally sobbing, right? And one of the options is... He's like, oh, well, you know, if you're not going to talk to me, I'm just going to leave. I'm like, your guy's pissed at him for just, for the kid crying. <laughs> you don't got problems in life. i got to pay my taxes. What the hell, kid? So you can't safe spot the first two forms of the witch's experiment, but the last two forms you can. So you just stand in this little crevice and you're not going to get attacked. Don't kick it over the fence again. Or do, I don't really care. 24 HP. All right, how much our stamina is? 6K, is that worth it? How much are energies? Up next, we're gonna be doing Vampire Slayer. All right, bye-bye. So 20 attack from that. So up next, we're just gonna go and do Cook's Assistant because it takes three and a half seconds. Well, that's Cook's good guy done. All right, up next, we're actually gonna do Trinome Village because it just makes sense in the order uh, of what I wanna do these quests in. So instead of safe spotting it, uh, all I gotta do, I hit it and then I run away. 31 attack. All right, let me go and do fight arena because I'm literally right here. I did that though, so I can have a nice little teleport. All right, up next, we're gonna do the fight arena. It's gonna get us even more attack. Let me be honest, I'm not gonna kill the general. There we go, another 12K attack experience. So now we are 37 attack. Now up next, we're gonna do waterfall quest. Man, I like how good the waterfall looks. This is really cinematic. I don't know if it ever used to look this good, but looks real good now, man. And from one attack, or from one strength, rather, to 30 strength and 41 attack. That's always, like, the best XP. This is, like, always the go-to quest. So the nice thing about Adventure Pass, the thing I mentioned earlier on, I am just hitting milestones because I'm doing all these quests. And because of that, I'm getting free things that I can claim from this guy. If you want to come claim free things, you can just come talk to him. See, the nice thing uh, about that Adventure guy is uh, I actually am doing Death Plateau now, so I need 10 he just gave me 10 trout for free, so I didn't even know that that was gonna happen. There we go, nice fast quest, and I almost got 42 attack from it. But the nice thing about this quest, getting it done, is you can go and buy a bunch of uh, climbing boots, and that is another good money-making method. Climbing boots are 12 GP, and then I think you can turn them into... Like at least 600 GP, 500 GP. I think you can literally just hold the space bar and then continuously press one, like this. Like, he literally just keeps pressing space bar in one. And you just get a full inventory very fast. So, there we go. We can go and sell this. 26k. So, yeah. Wow. Nearly 1k each. But, yeah. That took, like, no time. And that's 26, 27k right there. So, like, super easy money-making method if you just want to do that. It's really not even that terrible. So, up next, we're going to do Dork's Quest and the Knight Sword. And then get 10 Fletching for our agility. So we can go and do the Grand Tree. Trust me, it's faster doing it this way to get your agility than actually doing agility. Alright, so I bought these items too for the next quest. But this quest is literally going to take like 5 seconds. And I have the inventory space right now. Or I have no inventory space. Here we go. Funny enough, you need exactly 10 mining for the Knight Sword. So, here we go. So now immediately we have 29 smithing. Oh, this is nice and quick. I don't know why I've always done it the dumb guy way. There we go. 10. Alright, to the Shanty Pass! <laughs>
Wow, I didn't accidentally mean to accessorize this freaking well. What the heck? Yeah, you're gonna want to talk to this guy real quick. See, the nice thing about this is when you go to uh, fight this guy, he attacks you, right? So I'm gonna go up to this guy, chat with him. Chat with him one more time. And chat with him uh, one last time. There we go. Now I can safe spot this guy, no problems. I'm pretty sure he'll never actually move unless I move once. There we go, quest complete. So now we put it on agility. And once more, we put it on agility. Perfect. Quest complete. All right, so up next, we go and do the grand tree. And we needed 25 agility to do the grand tree. So that's why we do that. Because 1 to 25 agility anywhere else is incredibly slow. It's honestly just worth it to get the quest done. Plus, you get the quest points out of it anyway. So something you can do, by the way, is uh, the second you spawn in, you literally just run right over here. And it's safe spotted. But pe uh, what people would used to do, and what everyone, you know, what I used to do is I would just go right here and then he would line up and then just stay spawn from there. But it's just as easy to literally just click right here. So now we go from 41 to 45 attack and 32 agility, which is super nice. Next up, we're gonna get ourselves some quick wood cutting levels. We're gonna do that by doing the quest Monk's Friend. All right, we've just reached the four hour mark as well. So that brings us from one to 13 wood cutting. All right, next up, we're gonna do the sea slug. But before we do the sea slug, we need to get 30 fire making. All right, so we need to get 61 normal logs and 183 oak logs. And that will get us exactly 30 fire making. And there we go, 30 fire making. Not that long. So now we're gonna go do sea slug so we can get ourselves some fishing levels. Just so we can kind of have like a good base start to the account. 1 to 24 fishing. Up next, we're gonna do Merlin's Crystal so we can go and get Holy Grail done. This is gonna be for a bunch of prayer and defense. All right, here we are in Camelot. So next up is Merlin's Crystal. Here we go. That's Merlin's crystal done, and now we can do Holy Grail. This is where the big boy experience is gonna come in. This is one way to kill this guy. I mean, honestly, like the way you're probably supposed to do it is just go. You hit it, and then you move back. You wait until you can attack again, and you do it like that, and you move back. But I like this way better. Here we go. 29 prayer and 31 defense. That's big. That's big boy freaking strats right there, man. So now that we actually have 32, I'm pretty sure we can just go right for Dragon Slayer. Let me go get myself 9 Slayer and 9 Hunter, though, really quick from the Natural History Quiz in the museum. So yeah, you literally just come to Rock Museum, come right down here, talk to Orlando Smith, and he just wants you to get all the information correct. 9 and 9, nice and sweet. Yeah, we're actually balling out, man. Dude, oh my gosh. <laughs> You come up to this guy, he's like, hey, how are you doing, my friend? You just say, I'm not your friend. Like, all these quests, you could just be so rude. It's just so funny. All right, I brought magic so I could safe spot this next guy. So since this guy is a 3x3, three three, you can get him trapped in this corner right here. If you walk over here, then he's going to be able to attack you. And if you did that on accident, all you got to do is come back over here. So pretty much because the southwest tile of this NPC is actually looking at me, he doesn't need to move over anymore and he gets trapped right there. That's how the pathfinding of this game actually works. He physically sees me. He doesn't need to move. You can kill him. No problem. Yeah, this gear looks good as any to go and take on the dragon of Crandor. We're fine, man. All right, we're gonna go down the hole. The butthole of Crandor, if you will. See, this is why you bring ring of recoils to this fight. It's very important because you don't actually have to be good to kill Elvarg. You pretty much let it kill itself. I'll just be taking this since uh, I don't think you're gonna be using it anymore. Yeah. <sighs> So now, from that, we get 38 strength and 39 defense. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to run play body. And we're 46 combat. So I would say up next, we probably want to get ourselves 43 prayer. And then we can go and get monkey madness done. That's got to be the biggest quest on the list that we want to get done. But as of right now, we're going to go do priest in peril and then nature spirit. Because it gets us a few levels that we could use. All right, so that's priest in peril done. That's 30 prayer from that. That's nice. There you go. All right, so 16 crafting from that, and we are very close to 39 defense. Plus, we got an HP level from that. You know, we're going to do a different money-making method instead of apples. So let's grab some steel bars. 150 steel bars cost us 62k. We're going to go to world 330, the house party world. We're going to teleport outside our house, and then we're going to go to the host list. And, I mean, you can just honestly pick any host. Here we go. We want to go to the one with the craft maker's bench. And then we make clockwork mechanisms. So we bought all of the 150 steel bars for 62k well we nearly doubled it it could, could have been a lot better if i just sat there and waited for it to sell but honestly not worth it anyway so now we're gonna do one of my favorite money makers all right so you buy green dehyde 
for 1405 GP and you sell green D leather for 1641 get 120 this is pretty much always consistent money so we're gonna go ahead and tan all of this tan all of this in alkarid this is a classic money maker and it still freaking works i'm gonna actually use staminas too so i can keep running back and forth so i can make it nice and fast so yeah we just did that whole inventory in uh one stamina pot that hasn't even been two minutes yet all right sell it 197k bought all of it for 170k Turn it into nearly 200k. 30k profit every time. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I have, I want to say like 400k. Because it really does not take that long of a time. We're almost actually 7 hours into the grind too. So this is good money making in my opinion. So again, done with another inventory. And it was all done within 2 minutes. And from that, again, we made about like 30k profit. There we go. It's another inventory. 271. It's another inventory. 329k. <laughs> I love this. This is always a really fun money making method. Every time I do it. We're just about at the 7 hour mark. So at this point, we have 17 hours to go with the account. All right, here we are. It's another inventory. 374k. Here we go. 414k. Let's get another round. Here we go. It's another inventory. 518k. This will be the last one because I just want a little bit over that because I, <laughs> I really enjoy this. Here we go. We are done. This should be more than enough money at this point. And now we are at 580k. All right. Well, we are immediately going to spend the money so we can get ourselves 43 prayer. So let's get dragon bones. And we just need... I'm just going to get 80 of them. Yeah. So we do that. Then we get burning amulets. So now we go to the lava maze with the burning amulet. We run west and hope that we don't die. Well, I don't think we should, to be honest. And we're going to run all the way to this little altar. Then we use all of our dragon bones on the altar. And the nice thing about this is sometimes it just does not actually use the bone. That's the benefit of using this altar. Here we go. 37 prayer from that one run. And then after that... You can literally just keep trying to take this wine of Zamorak and then die. You don't even lose anything anyway. So then after you die, grab more bones and then repeat. It is literally as simple as that. So from the second run, I got 43 prayer and I should just get 43 prayer on the next run. No problem. Oh. I actually got PK'd. Well, I guess that's the only downside about this is that you could get PK'd. But like, I, I honestly didn't even expect to get PK'd with three inventories. But I mean, if you do, it's not that big of a deal. You don't really lose that much. There you go. 43 prayer. By the way, I should mention that if you want no risk and you don't want to go into the wilderness, then you can just go to world 330 and they will have gilded altars in any of the houses that you go to. So just use the bones on that. It's going to end up costing you pretty much double though. So now it is time for us to do monkey madness. We're going to do it at 49 combat. It might seem kind of low, but since we have 43 prayer, it's going to be like honestly pretty easy. All right, this is pretty much all you actually need for this quest. I'm gonna get a little bit better food. I'm gonna get the prayer potion so I can use my prayer on the island. Yeah, we're ready for monkey madness. Let's do it. Honestly, I always remembered this being a lot worse than it actually was. I always thought that you needed to go and talk to Garkor after this. Uh, and pretty much every guide says so. Like, after you get the Grigri. But you can literally, the second that you actually get the Grigri, go straight to the Ardoin Zoo. This guy should not still be with me, to be honest. So, I don't know what that's all about. But I guess he's going to come with us to the fight. So we're going to teleport in, and second that we're actually in, we're going to pray mage. And instead of actually fighting, all we have to do is run over here. Is you just sit here, and the second that his HP is, like, pretty much gone, like, around there, like, you just go and you have to deal the final blow. Okay, there we go. That should be it. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, you should bring your best spell that you can because I was just splashing on him nonstop. So bring better spells than I did. And monkey man is completed. So now... Because we only have 28 HP. I'm going to go train the stats. So let's go and talk to Darrow. He asks you what you want to focus on. And you tell him strength and stamina. So we go from 28 HP to 42. And we shoot up our combat level to... Should be about 55. 57. So up next I'm going to be doing Fremenic Trials so I can get the Berserker Helmet. Now because I'm not actually crafting the Liar myself, I'm going to kill Lanzig for the 1 in 17 chance at actually getting a Liar. This guy's pretty easy to beat. All you have to do is just bring a lot of food, bring some recoil, and some prayer potions and you'll be fine. Plus you can bring a Super Strength Potion as well if you want. And that is the Fremenic Trials done. So we got 47 Strength, 43 HP, and 27 Fishing as well as 20 Thieving. Which is really nice. And 33 agility as well. So up next, I'm thinking I'm going to get 35 agility. Because I need 35 agility for Horror from the Deep. 
We're just gonna do rooftop agility in Varrock. There we go. 35 agility. I'm gonna buy 102 uncut sapphires. And I'm gonna buy a chisel. And this should get us exactly 30 crafting. And that is 30 crafting. You know, before we actually go further, I wanna do a bit of money making again. Let's go turn this back into 500k. All right, that's one. That's number two. All right, that's another batch. Here's another. All right, another inventory. I'm actually done with another inventory, but I wanna see if I can collect more things. It just gave me all these free things. I can just go and sell all this too. 400k. Yeah, we're good. We're good right now for all the money making that we've done. All right, that's Alfred's bar crawl drunk. Wait, done? <laughs> Here we go. Dead. That's the quest complete. That's 20 range from that. That's 32 magic too. Plus, the best part about this is we can go up here. We can talk to this guy. I'm just going to tell him that it's a Guthix book. Let's see how much the Bandos page set actually is. I'm pretty sure it's called the War Book. Yeah, Book of War page collection. Yeah, it's 12K for the Book of War page collection. And it gives you decent stats for 12K. All right, so we come back here, get the Bandos book, and then we fill it up. So that's Demon Slayer done. Up next is the Golem. There we go. That's that's the golem done. Now we have to get the shadow of the storm done. You just get him trapped behind a torch. Just do that too. Yeah, that works perfectly actually. Every time his little HP bar goes away, you go right back in. Here we go. So we're gonna go for ranged. There we go. So we got 10k ranged experience. That brings us up to 30 range. I want to unlock the training spot in the depths of despair. So I'm gonna need. Client of Karend, and Client of Karend will give us 20% Hasidius favor. Yeah, Client of Karend. So now I'm going to put the favor on Hasidius. All right, so now that we got this part of the quest done where we have the Varlamor Envoy, we can actually unlock the training spot. We've unlocked it at this point. So you can continue on with the quest and finish it, but I am pretty much just doing this for the training spot. I don't really care about the quest. So now I'm going to gear up for the training spot. Yeah, we can't actually wear a Berserker helmet yet, so we are going to train that like thing immediately because that's what I want to wear. Let's also get a warrior ring too because those are super cheap. All right, there we go. We're going to do this thing bald. So at this point, we have a 11 hours, 42 minutes, and 16 seconds left to train the rest of our account up. By the end of this, I want to be wearing my Dragon Scimitar, and I want to have decent base stats. So we come back to Veos, and we go to Land's End this time. And we are just going to be running northeast right into this little cave. So what you're supposed to do for the quest is continue on down there. But there are already plenty of training spots right here for you to do. So you come down here and you train on these sand crabs and then after 10 minutes they are not going to actually pop up for you anymore so you can go up to the entrance climb the sand pile and then come right back down. So I'm going to be doing that for the rest of the time to see how far I can actually get my stats. At the very least I want to be wearing my berserker helmet. And 45 defense. Now we look like a freaking beast bro. Okay that is 55 strength. Now we're going to switch to attack so we can get 60 attack. We have 9 hours remaining. So we just passed the 20 hour mark and we got 60 attack. So that means we can wear our dragon scimitar. That looks so nice. I will never get tired of being able to use a dragon scimitar on a new account, man. It is so good. Yeah, the dragon scimitar is like 30% better because I am getting 46,000 experience, a bit over that an hour in strength. And the more strength levels I get, the higher that will go. And that is 60 strength. We are 69 combat and we have a little bit under an hour and a half left. So we are going to spend the rest of the time getting 50 defense and that should bring us to 70 combat so we have about 21 minutes remaining in the 24 hours and we just reached 50 defense so i am gonna go ahead and get one more combat level i can do that by getting my prayer from 43 to 45 and it is going to be useful anyway later on in the account 22 is all we actually need you can actually attack me well this guy is so bad too Oh my god, these guys are so bad. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? No way I just got away. No freaking way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> and we perfectly did that. We did that perfectly. So that is 71 combat and we are just about done with our time. So we have spent 23 hours and 33 minutes. Okay, uh, actually I have 27 more minutes and I didn't even realize that, but... That's completely fine. 23 hours spent to make this account at 71 combat 
all from scratch. The nicest thing about what I did here is that anybody could do it. Literally, you could go and click the link in the description right now and start playing RuneScape, and in 24 hours, you would have the same exact account, or at least a very similar account to the one that I do here. So now that I actually have this account, I am curious. How much money could I make in 24 hours with an account like this? 